Alright ladies and gents, pros and noobs, welcome to Anexus TV. This is Kyanite, and we have Anexus's second game. Anexus, that's a bit of a tongue twister. The second game here at the Prague Challenge from the Czech Republic. And uh, it's obviously the pistol round. So Anexus starting on the terrorist side, their favourite side as we saw in their first game against the Swedes. However the uh, CTs, the Poles, have actually put no one on A. And the poles have stacked B. So Rattlesnake making his way onto the A bomb site. He's been tagged. Tiams takes down Release. Matthew takes down MX. Let's take a look at these. They're getting the job done. Tiams watching long. Takes down R R Hud's G as well. But the bomb will go down. So two versus four. The CTs rotating. Making their way back round through from short. Hood Rattlesnake takes down Tiams. And three CTs actually making their way off, fr off from short. Rattlesnake sparring with them. That's true, takes out Rattlesnake, Husey takes out Matthew, but Dark is there, along with Destru and Innocent, to work together as a team and take Anexus down. Very well played by uh, Terms, I think. That's off to win, playing CT spawn all by himself. She had another player, but I think another player ran away at one point. Got two USP kills from CT spawn onto Long, because release and... MX, who we took down. So 1 0 to the Poles. Obviously, this Anexis side needs no introduction, and those of you guys who are familiar with Counter Strike will know that anything can happen. And simultaneously, those of you familiar with Counter Strike will know how the money system works. So Anexis will find themselves at a handicap without much money. Matthew takes down Rattlesnake, but MX pushes him and takes him down. Another CT has been spotted, he's going to make his way back round to long release in the pit now. He's, he's being flashed. Well, Alson, without a doubt, will call that he spotted pretty much all the terrorists at Alon. And uh, MX and Hughes and Hudge G are aware of that, which is why it looks like they're going to make their way towards B. But Zams is in the lower tools area, so uh, what we've got here is probably Hughes. Continue to make noise at Long. Zams will run into Hudge G, I'll assume, so let's take a look at them. Zams, actually, he's turned back around. Where's Hudge G? Hudge G. I think Huds G knows he's there, he actually spotted his head going in, Huds G making his way into lower tunnels, only on 20 HP, will take Diams down, well played by Huds G, that could be a massive turning point in this round actually, believe it or not. Dark and Innocent both on the A bomb site. they know that one of the CTs has been taken down on the B bomb site. so Innocent starting to rotate, release, holding mid, Husey causing trouble, looks like MX is going to take the bomb towards long, so we could see release and Huds G both making their way onto short, Huds G perhaps going... CT spawn, probably not, and Dark will get outnumbered here, so let's take a look at what the Anexus, the very experienced Anexus side decide to do now. MX, he's the bomber with a P90, making his way onto Catwalk, and I'll tell you what, Mr. Innocent, or oh, Mr. Dark, sorry, you're in for a surprise, only on 32 HP, trying to hold the A bomb site by yourself, and the push begins, down goes Dark, after release pushes long. And the bomb will go down. Innocent will take out Yuzi, but it is three versus one. Hudji takes out Destry somewhere else on the map. Innocent returns the favor. Down goes Hudji G, and it's two versus one now. MX and release holding this bomb site on A. And if Nexus win this round, well, I'll tell you what, it could be a colossal round for them. They, they would massively hurt the CT's cash. Innocent took down MX. Release was a bit late there, but got the kill at the end of the day, and the Nexus have made it 1-1. Very, very good round for them, which means that the CTs will probably have to eco now, and uh, Release is enjoying his M4 that he picked up from the last round. So now the T's are a big financial advantage. I mean, the terrorists, especially on a map that's t sounding like us two, already have quite a big financial advantage because of AK-47s costing less than M4s, or at least they did in Source, so correct me if I'm wrong with CSGO, but let's take a look at this, at what's going on here. Um, probably the logical thing to do, you can't really watch mid if you're only on pistols, so Olsen have played with 4 on A, and who's G is actually going to start asking questions of them, so let's see what's going to happen with him. He's pushing the A bomb site, he's only spotted one of them though, he's being hit. I don't think he quite knows what hit him, no pun really intended there, and Innocent takes him down. Quite poor play by Hoods G to be fully honest. Hughes watching mid, 
However, Hudji will have probably called that there's quite a few at long. Mephew and Dart make their way CT spawn now. Destro holding short along with Innocent on the A side. And Ziam's playing B by himself. And it looks like this is going to be a mid to B. And they're running right into the CT's trap here. The CT's expected it. Hence why they rotated down to CT spawn. MX sparring by himself as he disperses that smoke grenade to B bomb site. Hurricane Use takes down Mephew. Rattlesnake takes down Innocent. Release takes down Ziam somewhere else on the map. And MX, can you make your way into B? He does eventually take down Duck. So we didn't catch a lot of what happened with that mid to B push, but I'd assume that it was a typical mid to B push. And another round for an Exus as they increase their tally to two rounds in this first half. Four rounds obviously played. And the. I was tempted to say the old Alson twins for some reason, even though there's obviously five of them, so that wouldn't work. But it looks like we're going to go for a fast. B push from Nexus, no we're not, but the bomb is definitely B-sided, so let's take a look at what Zams is doing, he's only got a pistol, he spotted them, he's shooting, he's going to get taken down by Release's M4, you can't ask questions of Release with a rifle, and hang on a second, Dark is sneaking into lower tunnel spots, MX takes him down, but Hughes returns the favour, takes down Nephew as well, and Destro is the only CT alive now, where are you Destro, he's picked up an AK, what I would do here is probably save, Release has definitely heard Destro and Release. It would surprise me if Release didn't take him down. Destro has other ideas. As he makes his way back up mid, he knows that the T's are going to try and hunt him down. He's being surrounded and Release takes care of him. 3 1 in Nexus. Well played, Release. Good teamwork by Nexus to really turn this around. An epic game so far. 3 1 to the Brits. And this will be the proper round now. It's actually surprisingly the fifth round until both teams have properly, uh, properly got their hands on guns. But uh, they have their hands on guns now, so not no, not much to worry about. They've realised, I think, that Olsen are only playing one on B and one on mid. We've got two a two long setup and a one short setup from Olsen. So, Anexis hanging out as a team pretty much at the moment. Matthew watching mid, Destry watching short with an orb, which is quite an interesting um, layout. But if it works for them, it works. Well, Snake knows that one CT is at mid, so he's going to hold that angle as he will flash his teammates in mid to B and smoke him in as well. Hudge G spots that CT. Dance takes down Hudge G. Release will make his way into the B site from tunnels. Obviously, we know there's only one CT on the B site. Release, MX, release spots him on the radar. MX takes him down. The bomb now will go down after Matthew was taken down in the B bomb site. Zams takes down Rattlesnake with the nades. Spread all over the map as the Nexus look to defend their bomb site. The bomb has been planted. Destry with an AWP. It's always hard to retake bomb sites with AWPs. And it looks like Olsen are just going to fall back and give this round to a Nexus. There's only so many rounds you can afford to give away. And it's all good saving your guns, but if you keep losing rounds, then what's the point in saving your weapon? If you're going to lose a round, Zestro, however, does get an exit kill onto MX. And there goes the bomb. Far one, four one. It's about to say 5, 4, 1, 2, and Exis here at the Prague Challenge. And Exis, I think most British teams are really stronger at the terrorist side of DDoS 2, and many people will argue that DDoS 2 is a terrorist sided map. I know I'll argue that, but uh, I've also heard people in the past who really do beg to differ. So, weapons for both sides. Let's see what happens here. No one surprisingly going towards B for the T's. Looks like a quick A long split. Three CTs against five Ts. What can the CTs do here? Dark playing long by himself. Let's have a look at him then. He's being blinded. Is he going to be pushed? He's being naded as well. Him and Zen's trying to deal with MX. And Dark does deal with MX. But Matthew has problems of his own as Hoodsy G and Rattlesnake push, push him from long. Actually, he was released on Rattlesnake. Actually, he was Hood G as well. Good teamwork by the, by the uh, NX's boys. Release spots one of the CTs. Unshot. Flashed. As Hurricane Uzi slaughters both Destro and Innocent from behind. It's, the rounds are going very quick now. And Nexus really playing with their eyes closed. And despite somewhat of a very large advantage for Olsen at the start of the game, they haven't been able to capitalise on it. And now it's causing problems for him later on. And it looks like they're going to eco. They are decoing as well. So let's see what they're going to do. They're smoke mid. Don't assume that's smoke. Rattlesnake release Hughes the energy both making their all making their way sorry towards long. Rattlesnake spots him. And it looks like they're all gonna push out. Down goes Mephew. And as we can see here, Dark really is the only hope. Um 
that Olsen have for A. So hopefully MXs will capitalize on that. MX takes down Destru towards B. And Ziams takes down MX. Uzi takes down Dark, rotating back towards mid. Ziams is probably going to push lowers now. Innocent is going to watch mid. But obviously, I'm not sure whether Olsen are aware that no one is watching the A-bomb site. Uzi takes down Innocent. Release makes his way onto the A-bomb site. There's Ziams. Let's see, can he pull off this 4 versus 1 clutch? Person mad when he isn't on him, but... You know, there's a, some people like a gamble. And so far, Nexus have really been quite overwhelming for the Polish players. Jams looks like he's just, just going to save his gun. Again, another... I mean, you can't really expect Jams to go for this. And four versus one, really. But... He's probably taken the right choice here. Here's where he's coming in, takes him down. So, he's managed to cripple a Nexus a little bit for the next round, but... Pretty sure most of the players by now will have Max Cannon. Yeah, Save his gun. Ruby came from behind. Let's see. Probably one mistake Zams did there was he took down release here in lower tunnels and stayed in the tunnel, so he just made his way from behind. He knew exactly where he was and took him out, so probably should have changed his position. And Exis definitely a full buy. They've demolished Olsen so far. Olsen going for a 1B setup. Of a Nexus. A Nexus are guessing right this game. I'll tell you what. Every time the Olsen boys send one player B, they're pushing in there. Every time the Olsen boys send one player A, they're pushing in there. We looks like they're going to fall back now. Also have it pretty much on lockdown. Obviously, Dark has sacrificed his, his position normally. Watching his short to back up the guys at B. Hudge is going to hold on in lower tunnels. He'll be able to listen to mid that way. And also, if Matthew decides to push upper tunnels, he'll be able to take care of that. Rattlesnake gets the first kill somewhere on the map. Unfortunately, we weren't following that. Matthew watching B from the top of tunnels. Destru in a bit of an awkward position trying to watch short there. But I'm not the upper. He is. And uh, I'm sure he's much better of a player than I am. So, uh, fingers crossed he knows what he's doing. Rattlesnake prepares the smokes for what looks to be a mid to B push. Either that or a short push, a fake mid to B push. It looks like it is going to be a short push release. Pushes mid by himself, though. Dark takes him out. Dark will not be able to call angle on, guys. There's only one on me. Watch out on short. There's somewhere around mid because we would have heard him. Rattlesnake going huge there with a kill. Husey with one. Can he get the second? Oh dear. Yes, he can. The bomb's picked up. Now Matthew's by himself. He was obviously the B player. Let's see if he can pull off this 2 versus 1 clutch and add to Olsen's tally. He makes his way on from B. Uzi has got... Oof, and that nade landed right on Matthew. Good throw by Hughes. Rattlesnake is obviously watching the corner. And down he goes. It wasn't Rattlesnake, sorry. It was MX and MX. Picks up an Exus's seventh round. Kills left, right and centre at the moment for the Brits here in the Czech Republic. What are the CTs doing wrong? Well, I don't think I'm really the Gary Neville of Counter-Strike Source, but quite simply, they're getting picked off one by one from what I can see. <laughs> and Exus have really overwhelmed them so far. Rattlesnake is picking up picks with his AWP. Be it at mid or at long, the CTs just need to play it safer probably. Either play it safer or, well, I wouldn't recommend going aggro really. The CTs... Whatever it is, have to pull their game together. The T's probably realise that CTs will probably try and change something up by now, which is why they're playing quite more defensive. One thing that has uh, intrigued me, though, is the fact that MXs have realised that there's only one CT playing B all the time. So MX is always is going there. What he's doing at the moment, he's causing problems for them. He's smoking, he's flashing them. What that causes is Innocent or Dark or another player to rotate to B, which leaves one player less on A. And... Uh, Obviously, it's up to Inexus to pick the right time to push. They're playing it very, very slow. This is the part of Counter-Strike I think a lot of us dislike. But it looks like MX and, Re and Release and Yuzi are going to make their way towards B now. Let's see what Zams can do. MX creeping up softly onto them. But Zams only takes MX down. Release takes down Zams. Matthew in lower tunnels takes down Rattle. He's trying to make his way from short, and now the terrorists are dispersed all over the map. Hojiji sort of stuck on the A-bomb site, but he will take Destru down and probably realise that the A-bomb site is more or less clear, but hang on a second, he spotted another CT. Oh, he takes him down as well, and that's the Hojiji we we're all used to seeing. Hojiji, you obviously played for the likes of MTW, along with Nuki, Kreuterhumpen, and uh, I can't actually remember some of the other players, but 
not really relevant at the moment, but I guess it just goes to show how long I've been away from the game. Anyways, 8-1 to a Nexus. With us being a Nexus TV, obviously we're very happy with the current score. I don't think a Nexus have had to eco or deco yet ever since the second round, so fair play to them. We're seeing an eco from the counter terrorists who uh, for some reason have just split normally. Tell you what, if Zams gets pushed in B, then the AKs are going to hammer him, but that's my take on it. And let's see. It looks like Olsen are going to do a long push. However, Husey takes down Destru. Innocent will be able to take down Husey. And uh, that obviously means that the CTs will have an AK-47 in their hands. MX, however, takes down Mephew. Jams takes down MX in the B-bomb site. Well played, Jams. Span around, took down Rattlesnake, who's pushing mid to B. He's only on 2 HP, but he has picked up an AK-47. Let's have a look at... How the players are spread out at the moment. Release and Hoods G making their way into tunnels. Hoods G has made a lot of noise at lower tunnels. Oh, it's down to only on 2 HP, so uh, he managed to get the kill in the end with a bullet to the face. Probably a hole in his skull now, but that doesn't matter because he's dead. Release playing it smart. He's probably guessed that the uh, CTs have called bomb down. And there's a CT probably watching it. However, we obviously know that there isn't. Actually, there is. So, uh, couldn't quite tell X ray vision there. Not quite used to it because of my source days. Release has picked up the bomb. A very intelligent choice there. Hudge G takes down Innocent Dark. Will make his way now through CT spawn. Will he take down Hudge G? No, he won't actually. Release is going to try and push him. I think they're both going to try and push him at the same time. Dark takes down Hudge G. And Dark might actually pull this off. But Release on 100 HP. Dark on only 22. Release knows exactly where he's coming from. As he plays it noiselessly. Boom! And release delivers the goods for a Nexus. And that's round 10 for a Nexus. So, uh, so far, a whitewash for a Nexus. There's not much to say, really. There's not much to really analyse. To me, the fact that Olsen were uh, ecoing that last round and really spread out 1B, 1 mid, and 3 long said it all to me. In my opinion, what's the point of playing someone mid on the pistol round? I don't know, but whatever Olsen are doing now is working out for him. Hurricane, Husey, and Hunji both taken down at long. They tried a quick long push. Jams and Destru with his AWP there. He's got two kills so far. Destru with three. Takes down Rattlesnake and MX release. Takes down Matthew and it's Dark, Destru, Jams and Innocent against Ray, uh, release. Who takes down Innocent at the top mid. He knows that one of the CTs knows he's there. He's playing it cool. However, he doesn't know where exactly the CT is. He's going to throw that nade out. Good nade. He's going to land, land right on Jams. But he, he didn't actually do any damage, and down goes release. So, also the uh, Poles have their second round, but to be fully honest, a Nexus should be able to afford a tank by now. 9-2 to a Nexus. Let's have a look at what Rattlesnake is going to do with uh, his world-famous AWP. Probably one of the best AWPers, if not the best AWPer in Counter-Strike Source at one point. A few shots there, but nothing registering really. Release and MX going towards B. We're seeing something new. We're seeing something different. We're seeing a, bre uh, a breath of fresh air from a Nexus every round. But one thing they, they've got on lockdown is the fact that Olsen are always playing 1B. Well, they're always leaving at least one person in the upper tunnels area. At least according to my analysis, who's just there causing problems, causing issues. Because when you've got someone in upper tunnels, that allows that terrorist to always smoke. Flash from time to time. For example, let's say the terrorists are going to try and push A or try and push mid. What will happen is the player in tunnels will flash B, which means that that player in B can't rotate. So now what we've got is Innocent and Zams rotating towards B because MX got the pick at mid. Little do they know because the CTs aren't playing too aggro. They're not reporting in on the positions of these Ts who are taking their time. Little do we know that Rattlesnake and Co. are on short. And at the moment, they've got complete control of mid. Who's G and Rattlesnake? They're saying hello to each other on short. The bomb is on short. I believe it is Rattlesnake with the bomb. Who will peek with his AWP, the big green gun, as it's known in Germany, the AWP. At least as far as I'm aware. Obviously, Destru also has an up on the A-bomb site. What's Rattlesnake doing here, then? Not much. Because there isn't much. Oh! Dark takes down Rattlesnake from behind. Poor cover there by Nexus. Olsen Destru takes down Husey and Release takes down Destru. Three on three. Each being in favour of the CTs. Release and MX push short as a team there. Well played Nexus. Now Innocent is the last CT by himself. He's been spotted at long. Can he take this kill? No, he's not. He's just sprayed. And it's round number 12 for Nexus. And again, there's no other word to describe it really other than Nexus have been overwhelming Olsen.
Um, Olsen haven't been able to deal with whatever an Exus have thrown at them. Every time it looks like Olsen are going to get a small advantage, they just don't take advantage of it. And look at this, Olsen have to deco. So, Olsen have no one on B, and what do you know, an Exus have guessed right, and they've pushed B. So let's see what's going to happen to Release here, because I think he's, he's going to push mid to B by himself. And Release just walked past Mephew. Does Mef is Mephew aware of that? Release has spotted him on the radar. Release takes him down. A close shave there for the British Counter-Strike Global Offensive players. There's an X is set up to defend their beloved D-bomb site here on DDoS2. Let's take a look at Zian. He's got this fancy SMG, which I unfortunately... I'll admit I don't know the name of it. It's actually a shotgun. Takes down Hood's G. Rattlesnake takes down Zian's release. Takes down Death's through. Innocent there with his USP. Where are you, Innocent? Takes down release as well. Fair play to him. But, Uzi. Pops an AK bullet in the skull of the Olsen player. Make it 11 2 to the Brits. Those of you guys who watched the uh, first game of this Prague Challenge will know. Some of you guys might remember me from NXS's CPH Games shoutcast a few years ago. That's true, takes down Rattlesnake there at mid with his AWP. But obviously, the last game I cast was Counter Strike Source, so I'm not quite familiar with a lot of these new guns. Let's take a look at Hudge G. Mike, looks like NXS are preparing for a mid to be push. Problem here is that Dark is holding long, so these guys will, will know that probably nothing is going to happen A sided. And because they got no one on short, Hudge G, what Hudge G, in my opinion, is going to do now is going to go on there, make some noise. Make um, some noise, piss off Innocent and Mephew. What, what's going to happen is Dams is going to be on B by himself. Hoodsy G actually took down Mephew. So now the CTs are spread all over the place. But Zams has taken down both Hughes and MX. Release is sort of surrounded at the moment. Zams with the third kill. Bye bye, Release. Destru and Zams in the B bomb site. But the problem is, so is the bomb. So Hoodsy G is in a bit of a tough predicament. Well played by Hoodsy G initially to go into B and get the pick on the A bomb site. Dark is expecting Hudson G, and Dark finishes the job off. 11-3, and Olsen finally get that third round on the board. The Polish side, not sure where from in Poland. I assume they're from many different cities in Poland, just as, as far as I'm aware. The Nexus side are from many different cities. Rathsnake, however, did tag Mephew. Oh, what a shot. Actually... Destru took down Hoods G. I have to look, look to me for a second like Rattlesnake took down, took down uh, Mephew through the wooden doors. But anyways, it wasn't meant to be. So Mephew, again we're seeing the one per player in B, one mid, two on A, one long. Innocent is playing long here, so he knows that nothing's going to happen there. What's important for a Nexus is they've got complete control of mid all the time. So Rattlesnake pushes mid, takes down Jams with an orc. Well played there, Rattle. And it looks like the, uh, the beat push is going to... Commence as release makes his way into B from, from the tunnels. Here's one of the CTs. Now he spots him. Takes him down. A shot like that is easy for the likes of release. But Dark also takes down MX. But release is there to get his second of the round. Two versus one. It's innocent. Let's take a look. Can he pull off this two versus one clutch? And at least get a respectable scoreline for the poles here on DDoS2. He's expecting one of the T's to pop out from window. But he's making a lot of noise as well. Release is probably expecting him at the window area. The bomb is down. He's going to make his way in through the doors. But actually, no, he isn't because Rattlesnake there took care of him in the first place. 12-3 for the Brits. Obviously, it's MR15, which uh, for those of you guys not familiar with Counter-Strike, that means max round 15, which means every half is going to consist of 15 rounds. If a game consists of over 30 rounds, as soon as one team, he, team, one team, who's Tim? As soon as one team hits 16 uh, rounds, They've won the game because no matter how many rounds the other team gets, obviously, they're not going to be able to get more than 14. So as soon as you hit 16, you guys or, you guys, or the team that hit 16 are the winners. So uh, what's happening here? Hang on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Olsen have six players according to what I see on on my screen. I'm not quite sure why that is the case. Let's just hope they're not cheating. Anyways, let's try and update ourselves with what's going on. R release going big. 20 kills for 6 deaths so far in after this first half. 
Husey also playing well, 17 kills to 8 deaths, and Zam's a better player for the Polish side with 14 kills on 13 deaths. So Matthew's asking who is Pop, I'll tell you what, I don't know who Pop is. Now I know who Pop is, Embrace Pop, he was from Nexus' first game, so I think um, this half is going to be lived again, I don't think this is going to count. Obviously these servers are managed by Ebot, which I'm not, I'm not too familiar with, but I'm assuming it's going to be quite similar to... Uh, the plugins that were available for Counter Strike Source and CS 1.6. Some technical difficulties there. Not sure whether this round is meant to 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 continue or, but I don't know. MX takes down Destro, Rattlesnake takes down Dark. Where's this happening? Embrace Pop is just sort of stuck there by himself. Um, where's this last awesome player? Innocent Ryan. Let's see what he can pull off now. Not very much as Rattlesnake takes him down. And Pop is just sort of sat in T-spawn here. Pop is actually from the previous Swedish team that NX has played. I'm not quite sure what he's doing on this server. Um, I think we'll uh, require one of the the Prague Challenge admins to come along and kick him from the server. Or, or something along those lines. But it looks to me like that round is going to count. So 13-3 to the Brits. Okay. And br uh, Keep calling him Embrace now. Also, will probably want that round back if you ask me. The round has been cancelled, okay. So I take it one of the administrators has been alerted, but Pop is still on the server. Deary me, technical difficulties, guys. What's going on? It's a little disclaimer. Nexus do not approve of any of these technical difficulties occurring at the moment. There we go. Pop this connects the server. So obviously what's going to happen now, we're going to have a bit of an awkward scoreline. Uh, I'll be fully honest, I can't remember what the score was in the first half. Uh, my memory ain't that great. So I'm not sure whether the admins will return the overall scoreline, whether it will become round number 16. I'm not sure how it works. So we'll just have to wait and see what our check check of the vacuum. Is it check of the vacuum? I think it's check of the vacuum. I mean, I know it used to be called Czechoslovakia, but now it's called the Czech Republic. It's the same thing, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe someone can uh, contact me through the Nexus website and let me know. Um, anyways, it's not a big deal now. Zam takes down Hunch G. It's a shame it's only warm up. Is this round live? I have no idea. Waiting to continue the match. So I think we are still waiting for all the players to press ready, pretty much. The scores have been erased because the game was restarted. So, uh, good job we looked at them before the. The scores were erased pretty much. Release was in the lead for what I consider to be the home side because it's an Nexus TV. It's like watching Man United on Man United TV or Chelsea on Chelsea TV. This is an Nexus TV. And I guess I'm their alternative to the likes of Martin Tyler and John Motson. Those of you guys who follow football. Anyways, what am I on about? Come on, let's have Counter Strike back. What's going on, guys? Twelve three and go. Just tell the admin to restart. Here's our Hunts G's commands to the admins. And let's see if the admins will cooperate. But yeah, it doesn't seem like the players themselves can restart the game, so they've got to wait for an administrator. Let's take a look at this NX's side, Ralph Snake, Hunts G, Release, UZ, and MX. Obviously, I think they all more or less played together, bar UZ, in Dignitas back in the Source days after CGS or something along those lines. My memory ain't great. Um, I know that UZ played for Mouse Sports along with uh, Rattlesnake, Tugluts, and Nemlock in Source. If you're an X1.6 player who made the switch to CSGO, pretty much a force switch, in my opinion. If I'm fully honest, I prefer Source to both 1.6 and CSGO, but I don't want anyone having a go at me for saying that. But yeah, not much to uh, blab on about. Where are you, admins? Come on. Was Jews also a part of the. CS Source quite recent, before the MTW, 
who are quite a big organization, both for, who were quite a big organization for both Source and 1.6. Before they disbanded, obviously. Woods G was in their Counter Strike Source team, which was very successful at one point. Had the likes of Kreuter Humpen, Nucky, and uh, two players who I can't remember. So I'll have to apologize for that. I know Release played with them for a while. So it, it basically made it two Brits in the German lineup. Talking about release, we're actually missing him from the server at the moment. Assuming my uh, memory serves me correct as well, I do believe Inexus's next land is going to be Dreamhack Valencia. But again, my as I've made clear quite a few times, my memory ain't great. And finally, we're about to go live. 12-3 to Inexus. The admins have sorted it out. Is released back on the server. Yes, he is. It looks like we're going to need another restart. Everyone died. As dark. Nicely put it. Noobs died. Come on, admins. Noobs died. Either that, we're going to have a, six, a 1v1 for the 16th round. Hoods G versus Dark. Continue. That command didn't work too well from Hoods G. Good shot. <laughs> nice muscle memory there. Play is getting a bit edgy. Probably add a bit more friction to the game, perhaps. One downside it could do is actually put down an Exus, who obviously are currently on a high because they are 13-2 in the in, in the lead, losing a lot of momentum just because of this long break. Finally, looks like it's gonna go live, but it looks like one of the MX is dead. So I don't know if. If uh, Anexus are going to play with four players, I think it looks like Anexus are going to play with four players. Deary me. Yep, it looks like they are. So let's get back into it, guys. Um, release. We saw him holding B for the Brits. Actually, is it live? I don't think it is. It's not live. It's not live. Deary me. I think it's going to be live now. Fingers crossed. MX is still dead. Come on, MX. <laughs> As Innocent puts it, they don't want MX alive. Here we go, he's alive now, so I think we're live, I think. Nope. I'll take that as not live since Hood G is just took out MX with a bullet to the face. And we await another restart from our friends at the Prague Challenge. So all the Nexus need to do after this restart is add another What's my math like? Uh four rounds to their total, and that'll that'll give them sixteen. Obviously, Olsen won't go down without a fight. Looks a bit dodgy there from release, looking straight at the terrorists through the wall, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, now we have another 1v1. Deary me. Come on, admins! Yeah, Counter Strike Source. I mean, I'm not quite sure what what the majority of viewers at the moment on this stream are gonna be with regards to X Source players or X 1.6 players. I mean, I'm not sure whether Dark Destru, Matthew Zams, and you're the bloke. Who is he? Innocent. He just joined the server. X 1.6 or X Source players. X Source players are definitely uh, playing much better at the moment. But. It's interesting to see how, how, how both communities have have come together now to play one game. Obviously it's brought it's brought the likes of, you know, these boys in a Nexus at the moment, who are without a doubt X CGS, some of them X Top, Counter Strike Source players, and it means that they get to come up against the likes of Navi, you know, who are probably one of the best CS one point six teams, Bar Fanatic at one point or SK or 
ninjas in pyjamas. I'm not even sure if Navi were around back in the ninjas in pyjamas days. You know, I, I don't have a history degree in Counter-Strike. But, but, but yeah, it's interesting to see but all the communities combine as one. I mean, you guys let me know what you think in the chat. I mean, back when I was a player, granted I wasn't a very good player, but I used to play. Um, I would have loved to come up against uh, the likes of Markalov. I remember when I first got the CSGO beta, and I was deathmatching. And uh, I found MBK in existence, obviously from very games in the same server as me, and it was like, oh jizz. <laughs> back uh, in the playing days. Fanboy is high with this one. Big with this one. Great with this one. I, don't know, I can't remember what Yoda says. You know, guys, I tell you what, my memory is becoming ridiculously poor. I mean, those of you guys who remember me from the last Nexus shoutcast I did, which was back in the source days, um, funnily enough, I actually casted uh, a game where Rattlesnake was playing. I believe he was playing for Epsilon at the time. I can't remember who was in his team. But yeah, funnily enough, oh, actually, it doesn't matter now. They're going to go live. Fingers crossed. Is MX going to stay alive? Stay alive, MX. Don't die. Looks like he's going to stay alive. So, uh, oh dear, what's wrong with the score? 11-3. No, that's not right. Oh dear. You know, I'm sat here at my desk with a face palm at the moment. Rattlesnake, let us win the round, then it'll work. Sure. That's quite nice. Release there with the kill on to Destru. Newsy to Dark. Release takes down Innocent. Newsy makes it two for himself. There we go. There's the round. And uh, there is the team switch. 11 6. Oh dear. I mean, it says 12 3 at the top for us, but it says 11 6 for them in the chat. So I don't know. It's round 16. I think we're going to be live. I'm not sure. Actually, we're not live. Uh, NL. Deary, deary me. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, I will put the time in the description where the match actually goes live. Uh, this is a bit ridiculous, but we'll get there in the end. I'm sure we will. Assuming it's already live. And they keep saying NL. Just a troll. Good shot there. And another the release himself. With regards to how the source and 1.6 players have both adapted to CSGO, and without a doubt, I mean some might argue that CSGO is on the source engine. Probably getting slightly technical here, I don't know. Um so source players would have an advantage, but in all honesty, I think both both sets of players will have to adapt to new things. If I remember correctly, nades are, the, the the movement of nades on CS:GO is quite familiar to CSS. I really haven't played CS:GO that much. That's the problem, guys. Um, so obviously, I remember nades were a lot slower on CS 1.6. So I'm sure the 1.6 players will have had to adapt to that. Well, some of the source players will. I think both both sets of the players will have had to adapt, have will have had to adapt to uh, different movement styles. Obviously, no more bunny hopping, which is something even on source when uh, or be it 1.6 when bunny hopping is disabled, a lot of players still bunny hopped. Granted, your 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 acceleration or pace or speed wouldn't increase, but um, I knew someone on Counter Strike Source who I used to play with. And playing against him was hell because every time you'd want to kill him, he would start bunny hopping left, right, and center. Granted, he wouldn't get faster, but it, if he's being shot at, he starts doing the fancy bunny hop thing and uh, makes him very, very difficult to shoot. Anyways, Rattlesnake and Release have both written live. MX has written have fun, Jams has written have fun, Innocent has written have fun. And finally, looks like we're going to go. It says nil nil. Don't you guys remember 12 3? So let's have a look at what. 
Olsen are going to do. Olsen are going to go for a quick short push. And let's take a look at what Hughes is going to do here. Destry takes down MX at mid. Who we saw him playing mid as well for the CTs against Embrace. Down goes, I think that's Dark with three kills already. As you know, he's only got two kills. Destry got the other kill. Rattlesnake with one of the kills. He pushed out a long. Release is also going to make his way long. Rattlesnake and Release are going to stick together. On this one, in an attempt to retake the bomb site, I think we see two of the, uh, two of the uh, terrorists sorry, trying to go towards short. The T's don't know that release is also actually now they do because Dark just took his face off and Dark just got a four man. So well played to Dark with the Glock. Showing the Nexus how it's done and what. And they seem to be pausing. And he's back. Dark is back. As you know, it's jams. I was just going to say, Dark gets a four man and uh, has to disconnect off the server so he'll lose all the money. At least I think in Source he would lose all the money. Again, I keep making cross references to 1.6 in Source. I need to play more CSGO. Anyways, so, um, an X, actually, it says 1 0 to an Nexus, it's 1 0 to Olsen. Deary me, Prague challenge, guys. Sort it out next time as Jams looks to make his way onto short. He still has a Glock, however, nevertheless. Takes down, nonetheless, sorry, takes down Rattlesnake on short. MX also goes down. Jams disconnects off the server. Interesting stuff. And it looks like. All of Olsen are disconnecting off the server due to no Steam logon. What is going on? My few timed out. Did the electricity go off or something there? <laughs> I don't know. Strong words by Rattlesnake. Be saying so we win that thank you because it looked like Olsen all disconnected but it seems to be a steam error or timing out error Nex is getting a bit agitated can't blame him I'm getting agitated and I'm not even playing let alone if you're playing and there's a lot of money on the line and you're nervous especially when you're 13 2 up or 12 3 or whatever it was my memory you know I, I I need to get some something for my memory. Sure, I'm only 18 years old. Surely my memory shouldn't be going that bad already. But 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 yeah. You know, believe it or not, I forgot what, what I was talking about. Or maybe I'm just very tired. I don't know. But come on, Prague challenge. And it looks like all the Nexus players are leaving. So. Is it a default? Deary me. I mean, as far as I was, as far as, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> Terrorists win. Regards to the English scene, I think Epic Land is coming up. Here we go, match restarting. And the server still thinks Nexus are the terrorists. Obviously, I don't think there was a, a change around or something along those lines. But it doesn't matter now. We're going to have to try and not get confused about the scoreline. I'm not sure whether Olsen are going to get to keep that winning pistol round. If they don't, then, to be fully honest, I don't think that's really fair on them. But it looks like we're going to go for a straight B push. MX, Rattlesnake, and Release all play, all going towards B. And loving it. Bullets left, right, and center. Destry takes down two. Release takes down Jams. MX takes down Innocent. Down goes MX to the Glock of Dark. Hoods G now rotating towards B. Two versus three, but Destry is only on 9 HP. Down, Dark goes. No, not actually. Nephew takes down Hoods G. Hurricane usually takes down Destry. And what looks like Dark, I think it's blocked there, yeah, it was Dark who took down Hughes. So, Olsen got their first round back. I'm not sure whether it's going to count as two rounds for them. But, you know what, let's just go ahead and when they leave the server, they leave the server. <laughs> That's when we'll know who won. Uh, my money's still on a Nexus. Obviously, this is a Nexus TV, so you could argue that I'm paid to say that. But in all honesty, I'm not. Let's... Uh, put our serious caps on and take a look at what's happening here. Release playing B by himself, MX. Those of you guys who watched the initial game that MX is having. The first game, which was a 16-8 win against um, a Swedish mix, I believe, or a Swedish team, I'm not quite sure, called them Brace. Um, they uh, they play the same setup. Hudz G, Razor, Rattle, and Hughes all playing along now. Thing is, MX is watching mid from there, so these guys are actually going to push on to short. When they do push on to short, I think we'll see MX rotating through 
um, CT. Release is going to try and hold that. I think he will have heard Zam. So let's take a look at what Release is doing. Where are you, Release? Actually... He's heard nothing and he's going to get taken out and he does jams, gets that pick now. We'll probably see MX rotating towards and looking towards tunnels. But Olsen are actually going to end up dodging the entire NXS cast here and make their way onto the A-bomb site. I must say it's quite poor by NXS. Immediately assuming it's going to be a B, particularly when MX is there and it's clearly not a B. And NXS should know that there are no CTs on the A-bomb site, but... Again, that's something they're going to have to ask questions about. It's not my job. Because G's been boosted somewhere fancy. Destru, Mephew, Innocent. All on the A-bomb site. It looks like NXS is just going to save. I'm not sure. I I'm not sure whether they agree with Olsen to just give him a round. MX there spots one of the T's. Takes him out with that Galil. Hurricane usually takes that Mephew. Are they going for it? I can't quite tell. I don't think they are. And there goes the bomb. So probably that pro that will, that round was probably, assuming the Nexus just weren't just being bad, that was probably a Nexus's way of giving Olsen a second round, which to be fully honest, they deserved before the steam errors popped up. So I think now both sets of teams are going to have weapons. Let's take a look at what these lot are holding. Actually, no, they don't. MX is being actually, yeah, MX does have a Galil. They've got what they picked up from the last round, basically. As we can see, Hoji, they're still on a on a on a USP release, playing B rather passively, just jumping up and down on the windows. We have got uh, release and our rattlesnake has switched with MX. We got two playing mid. Destry obviously picks up that orb, so takes down rattlesnake who was playing mid. Nephew takes down MX as he peeked on top of double doors. Hoji's playing short, rather aggro now. He has taken down Nephew. Fair play, Hoods G. So he only has a pistol. Dark takes down release. Dark has been spotted in lower tunnels. Hoods G trying to take him out, but Hoods G is most likely going to get pushed now. Where's Hughes? Hughes is still playing mid, so he's offering um, uh, some flanking for his teammate Hoods G, who is now dead and obsolete. So let's see what Hughes can do. He's only got a USP. He'll probably, in my opinion, well, he'd probably go for it unless he picks up a gun. The bomb is going to go towards the A bomb site. Hughes has no idea, no idea that the Olsen players are obviously making their way onto the A-bomb site, not no idea about the game itself. It'd be quite foolish to to say that after everything we've seen from him so far in the game. So yeah, it does look like he's going to save, he's not really running, he's probably hunting for a dropped gun somewhere, his teammates probably telling him, we died here, I died with a Galil, MX is probably telling him, I died with a Galil, double doors, you can go there and find it. You can have it, and obviously it will save him a bit of money. Um, those of you guys who aren't familiar with how cash works. Oh, he's spotted an AK. He's probably going to pick that up and make a run for it. Run, run, as fast as you can. Can't catch me. I was going to say gingerbread man, but I don't want Hughes to take that the wrong way. All due respect to Hughes, of course. <laughs> anyway, so that's the... I'm not sure whether it would count as... Yeah, it is round three. It might count as round four for Olsen. I'm not sure. Depends whether Nexus really gave Olsen that round back. I like to think that they did give Olsen that round back. The problem is now we're not quite sure of the overall score. But, you know what? Who cares? This is the first round. I'd, I'd like to think that the CTs are brought up properly now. Uh, you see Hudgy with an M4 and the, along with Husey at long. So let's see what the T's are going to do here. Dark is chilling in lower tunnels. Release and MX both playing B. With Husey and Razor and uh, Hoods G and Rattlesnake on the A-bomb site. Rattlesnake, one second he's at mid, one second he's playing long, one second he's playing short. So, quite a bit, quite a hybrid player. But we know what he's capable of. And uh, it doesn't really matter where you put Rattlesnake on the map. He'll, uh, he'll get the job done. However... Zams has made his way out to short quite easily now, so I think he'll uh, put that smoke out and probably without a doubt peak. No, my look, what I just said was a smoke is probably a flash grenade. <laughs> Let's check, is it a smoke or a flash grenade? Sounds like a smoke, yeah, I think it's a smoke. <laughs> Anyways, as he peaks on the A bomb site now, let's try and get back into the momentum of things. And see, that big break slowed the momentum of things, everything's going slow now. Come on, Matthew makes his way up from. Uh, Lower tunnels as they flash mid to B. Matthew makes his way into mid to B. Runs into release. Release takes care of him. Hoods G takes care of Innocent. Release gets number two for the round. Bye bye, Jams. Dark takes down release, however. 
And I think that is Dark in B. He is. He's pushed out. He's spotted. Hoods G nails him in the head. And now Dark prepares for this defense of the B bomb site. As he pulls out, makes it number three. Actually, no, it's Destru who got the kill. However, De Dark will try and make it number three. Can he make it number three? Dark can make it number three. He's already got one four, man. If my memory serves me correct, I know I say that a lot, but my memory truly, really, really is dire. And Newsy begins process, run away, and save your weapon. Which is fair. But the momentum, in my opinion, this the, the, the big break, the frustration that Anexus have gone through, um, is, is given Olsen a slight advantage, and I'm not just saying that because we're on Nexus TV. You know, I played this game. I know what it's like when you you've played a half, or you're in the middle of a half, and you got good momentum going, and you're playing well, and then you know one of your opponents' players times out, and you have to pause the game, or one of your opponents' players decides he needs to use the toilet. It really does. It really can hinder your performance. I mean, like any sporting game, really. I mean, in my opinion, football, the same happens in football, once a team get into their stride, if you stop them, then, uh, you know, they probably won't perform as well soon after they need to find their speed again. Anyways, this ain't football, you know what, this is counter right Global Offensive, so Husey, as usual, playing long, quite aggro, I like that position there in pit, because it, it allows him to, to be looking here all the time, he'll be aware if any flashes come in. And let's have a look at what Rattlesnake is going to do here. He's holding short from an interesting angle, which I'm not quite sure where it is, but he should be able to get a pick here. He doesn't know that a T is coming short, and he missed the shot. And uh, I think if that was Counter-Strike Source, Rattlesnake would have definitely nailed that any day. Dark is playing, trying to work B by himself. He knows release is in there by himself. He's flashed in there, and one of his teammates has accompanied him. So let's see what happens now. Dark takes down release. Mephew takes down MX, and uh, Nexus find themselves... Two men down, Destru, Orpin, lower tunnels, trying to check for the short rotate, but where's the bomb? The bomb has now gone down on B, and Olsen, the Poles, will prepare to defend the bomb site. Hughes doesn't look that interested. Let's have a look at Rattlesnake. Neither is he very much that interested, and Hoods G is around there somewhere. Where are you, Hoods G? There he is, along with Hughes. So they're all protecting each other. They're giving the round to Olsen. Obviously, didn't feel like they could have made their way over to B. Can Dark get a pick now? Rattlesnake, let's have a look at you. Rattlesnake should be able to hit the shot. And he missed it. And what a shot there by Dark. How did he pull that off? Hurricane Hughes takes down Matthew though. And he sprays. They're both spraying through the door at each other. And they both survived at the end of the day. But not the start Nexus had in mind without a doubt. Being 5-0 down at the moment. Hopefully they'll start to turn it around. Looks like Olsen are going to start working B. Bomb obviously being there in the tunnel area. Release takes down Innocent. He's only on 15 HP though, so if they've realised that, they'll probably start pushing him. They're trying to nade him. They're falling back into tunnels though. Rattlesnake has rotated from the A-bomb site. Probably a bit of an early rotate, to be honest. But he knows that, not me. Obviously, I can see a lot more than he can. Bound goes dark as Hoosie pushes out along. And it is now 3 versus 5. And hopefully, Nexus can use this two man advantage. Let's be honest, Release ain't much of a man with 15 HP. But um, actually, I take that back. He got a kill. Don't matter whether he's got 100 HP or 15 HP. You can put your money on Release getting the kill. So, uh, Matthew's going to try and push Release. And Matthew there with the spray takes down both Release and Rattlesnake. Um, an interesting kill. And. Uh, Olsen, this uh, round looks winnable now for Olsen. Granted, Matthew's only on 12 HP and Destru's only on 7 HP. Destru, quite laid back actually. They don't have the bomb. Actually, Matthew does not have the bomb. The problem is they know he's in there. They know the bomb was in there. Uh, so all the CTs really have to do now is take care of Destru, like that, well played Hughes, and wait for Matthew to plant. Because Matthew's going to have to plant. He's actually not going to plant. He's going to go for it, but Hoods G has him in his back pocket. And Anexus get. What is uh, an important round after, to be frank, an awful display so far this half. But, my money's still on them. With regards to what I think Anexus are, are doing incorrect at the moment. Who am I to tell them what you're doing right and who, what you're doing wrong, but that's what I'm here for, I guess. Um, I think they're rotating early, like we saw them doing so in the Embrace game. 
They're going, they're going quite aggro at the moment, so that's two Olsen players down already, taking them by surprise. Olsen obviously bought up as well, so I think if they don't win this round, we could see Nico or Deco. Then again, they won a good five rounds, didn't they? So, uh, you know, anything can happen at the moment. Oh, Zams comes back to T spawns to try and pick up that AK-47. There's no momentum in this game anymore. It's going slow. Hughes is watching mid by himself. That M4. Luckily for him, peak the second. Destru stopped looking with his up. Rattlesnake takes down Innocent with a shot to the face. Along with his big green gun. And Huz G is being crept upon and short. Have they not popped up on his radar? They're going to walk past each other at this, at this rate. Huz G takes down one. Huz G takes down two. And an Exis finally start racking up their tally. Making it two this half. About time as well. Come on, Anexis. And a small come on for Olsen. Not quite sure how to say come on in uh, Polish. So, it looks like we're going to have a quick B push, actually. Destry making his way into B. Release with one, MX with one, Huzi with one, Rattlesnake with one. And all we need now is for Hudji to get a kill, and then it's a killer piece. But Rattlesnake took that last kill of the round and what was quick what was at 1.5 nil to Olsen is now suddenly 5-3 welcome to Counter-Strike and that is what Counter-Strike is about if you got the money it can just make such a big difference and to be fully honest the Nexus pulled this game out um, you know without having a handicap of having more money they weren't coming up against a T side who were decoing or decoing and um, we're seeing an, a very aggressive push here actually by the CTs both Husey and what I believe was Hud's G. And down goes Who's he? Didn't work out for him. Jams now watching the top of mid. Rattlesnake almost got picked. MX with the kill onto Innocent. Hud's G holding short. I think he's heard Destry down there somewhere. Four on four. Can still go either way pretty much. As Matthew and Jams start to work long. MX I think will have definitely heard them going towards mid. They'll be telling Rattlesnake to watch out. And if he did tell Rattlesnake to watch out, Rattlesnake definitely got the job done. Unfortunately, he got killed by Destru. But, uh, you know what they say on Counter-Strike? Never die without taking uh, an, op an opponent's life. And that's exactly what Rattlesnake did. So it looks like a mid-to-be push is going to commence now for the terrorist side. Or oh, they're going to fake a mid-to-be push. But MX pushed long and took down the bomber. And that's going to cause a disadvantage, a big disadvantage. On the Terry's side, Dark playing as good as he has done so far in this game. Takes down Huns G. Big mistake there by Destru. Assume that no more CTs would be there. Release took care of him. You don't want to mess with Release and his rifles we've seen so far throughout this whole match here at the Prague Challenge. And even against Embrace, he played very well. Now let's see what Dark is going to do on 4 HP. He does have AE4 armor, but I don't think it's really going to save you that much. What use is armor on a dead guy? You know, you're already dead. Takes down release and the Molotov from MX takes care. That takes down, takes care of Dark, and that is good game, guys. So uh, as always, thanks for watching the Nexus TV, and uh, remember to tune in in the future to view the next Prague Challenge games live from the Czech Republic. Thanks for watching.